You know, it seems that every time I go to an uh, indoor fly-in, I wind up, you know, trying to sort out my batteries as I fly. I have several on the chargers. I can't charge enough at once, it seems, because we're just constantly flying. So, I, you know, I've been using my uh, cell spy with an octopus to uh, do this, but for expediency and charging, here's what I've decided to do. I thought maybe I would show you how I did it. Hopefully it'll help you if you need to do something like this. Need a double pole, double throw switch. Cell spy with a JST connector for that end. You'll need a JST connector for your E-Flight and 500 milliamp batteries so you can plug that in. You've already got this connector because if we open up the charger, that connector, what you want to do is remove it from here and just drill a hole and put it on the outside like that. And you can glue that in there with hot melt glue. You know, many of you saw the video I made a couple years ago on how to move that connector. So I point out again that I put the connector on the outside because many of my small batteries have Velcro that won't fit in the slot on top. I'm going to remove these wires, connect the center tap of the switch, and then we're going to connect either side of this so we can set it up, and I'll show you. Here's the schematic, what it looks like. Okay, I've drilled the first hole for the switch, and the second hole for the wires that are going to go in for the cell spike. I got my cell spy alarms from commonsenserc.com for $14.95 each. I know there are cheaper ones without alarms, which is okay because they're not needed in this case anyway. Just make sure they can read single cells. Then I mounted the Velcro on the back so I can mount this right here. Okay, here's what it looks like inside so far. Okay, we've got the switch mounted in here. We've got the wires for the battery up front and to the cell spy in the back. What we have to do now is simply remove these two wires and with a couple of short wires we're going to solder those back in and then connect, solder that to the switch. Okay, so it's pretty easy to actually remove these wires. All we have to do is grab these two wires on this side and uh, remember the plus is over here at the top and heat these two up at the same time. I'm going to pull right out, okay. Okay, I'm going to tin the terminals to make this easier to solder, first of all. And since the red wire on the diode is on the top, down here, I am going to put all the wires red on the top. You want to tin the wires too. Uh, tinning means to melt some solder on the wires or the connectors first, and that makes it a whole lot easier to solder when it comes time. You know, if you can't see what I'm doing right here, just refer to this simple schematic and I'm sure you'll be able to easily figure it out. And when you're done, your switch should look like this. Okay, here's my unit, ready to go. Uh, I want to test one of the smaller batteries with this connector. Piece of cake, all I do is plug it in here. And this will tell me, one cell, 4.2 volts, 4.2 volts, so that's charged. If I want to charge it, all I do is flip the switch up and it's now charging. You can see that, okay. Center is off. Okay, let's say I want to charge this battery, this connector. Flip the switch down to test. One cell, 4.2. So another thing, if you've got one of these batteries out of the MCPX, you have an adapter it came with. All you have to do is plug that adapter in like this and plug that right into here. Charging there. Let's see what we got. 4.7, 4.7. This thing needs charge, so crank that up. Well, I just realized as an added bonus, by adding an extra switch here, double pull, double throw switch, that will tell me the voltage in the main batteries. So it's a little bonus. And now I'm going to hook up the red wires right there so you can see how that hooks up. Okay, here's a schematic with both switches shown. Make sure you study it carefully and you'll see easily how I did it. 
So I know which side's the plus side. I usually paint a little white marker over here. So that's how I know my plus. Okay, put my red dot here so I know that's down. So here's how it works. Let's go ahead and plug in a battery. Start with this one right here. Everything is off in the center. Doesn't matter, really. Plug this battery in. Let's say we want to charge that. I'm going to push this up. This is charging. I want to see what the voltage is while I'm charging. I push this up. Okay, I want to set, take this off. Now, my voltage is 5.4. That's the actual voltage of the four batteries in here. And uh, I'm going to replace those so it gets back up to six. You know, these energizers are amazing batteries. I've had a set in my transmitter for over a year and a half, and they still read over 6.8 volts. And using them in the charger is amazing because instead of only 10 or 15 reliable chargers, I can charge like 60 or 70 times. This on charge. And charging. And the voltage is... 4.17, okay. Let's see what the voltage of the batteries are in the uh, charger. Pull the battery out, and here we have 6.8, 6.8 volts. That's nice. Put this back on charge, and of course I can still use the cell spy alarm. All I have to do is unplug this right here, plug in a, uh, a larger battery, for example. This is a 4 cell, 410, 410, 411, 410. I haven't used it in quite a while, but that's how that works. Well, this will be great for me because I can easily find it and easily plug batteries in it to test them and not be fumbling around so much with batteries so I can fly more. Because I hate it when I go to fly and find it only flies 20 seconds and the battery's dead. I read it's a good idea to actually have charged batteries before the flight. <laughs> uh, this is one charger I think I'm going to like. Hope you like it too.